Generals, gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Command and Conquer Zero Hour. We have a game here that is not exactly a top tier. I haven't exactly heard of these players. And I can't guarantee that Flash is the the South Korean Brood War pro gamer. Oh, I mean, no. Probably not. <laughs> no guarantee. We, can, we can't actually guarantee that Kozak is actually Jaedong. I yeah. So, uh, <laughs> nevertheless, we will be casting uh, a good old fun game of Zero Hour. So, we'll be Flash. He's going to be playing as our China tank. He's the green down the bottom right hand corner of Coastal Conflict. Yeah, different map. And uh, Kozak Boy is uh, the China tank. China. Uh, vanilla. No, vanilla. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, Flash is, was a tank. Yeah. Is, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, I do love casting different maps. And. I, I'm always desperate to find maps that aren't TD, mm. and like it just makes it so much more interesting and adds so much variety. Uh, so let's see how that, it plays out, and especially when you have bigger maps, it, you have different build orders that are actually viable. Mm. Like you have, um, you know, airfield is more viable as we do see here now. Triple Dozer is often more viable, and so Flash is going for his northern supply. Uh, interesting yeah. because th this is the, the safer supply. It's certainly closer to the base. But maybe he wants to get a second factory. Actually, that's Barracks. So he's going for an oil cap, uh, it would seem. But Kozak Boy's beating him to it. Yeah, he's at the oil at the top there. But I think there's another one in the middle in addition to that. And going for these um, cash drops, the UN cash drop kind of things. They're uh, on the corners. Yeah, I don't even know what they're called. Yeah. I'm not crates. sure. Yeah. Probably crates. Probably crates. They uh, do make give you the cha-ching money as well. Oh, the supply truck crushes though. Yeah, this Will is a good Will they play. be in time? No, oh, he, maybe not. He, he, he let them have him. Yeah. Oh, okay. well. So, mm. probably because he figured that... Oh, he actually built a third truck, so he doesn't need that truck. Um, so, just for the record, those crates are actually 100. You get 100 for yes. those crates. And even at the bottom here, Kozak's going for the other oil. So, Kozak's got a pretty great opener, but the dragon tank is driving towards the base. A bunker helix has found it. So, uh, nice follow-up there by Kozak. All caps into a helix for a very strong defensive mm. play. There was a GAT... Uh, and he's a vet one gat because he's trying to tank, but you can't quite get the one v one. No, so you can't. No. He's, he's waiting for a second gat. I actually like this bunker here as well. It's going to be very safe, uh, even from the helix. With I think it's only two tank hunters, but it's still going to be enough to deter yeah. the helix. Cool stuff here as well. It's it's a, it's a nice map because even your your secondary supply, it's not really a safe supply like you see on other maps. So as you see, the secondary supplies, if we look, if we count secondary supplies, the one down the bottom, they're right next to each other. They're really close. So really easy aggression between those two points. And not surprisingly for a China mirror, we will be seeing lots of bunkers being thrown out. Um, it is a map of uh, choke points, but there's a hell of a lot of choke points. Yeah, that's it. It's, it's a choke pointy map, mm. but there's like seven choke points, not like three yeah. of them. Hard to get all of them. Yeah, so you can certainly camp them down, but then you can just be flanked. I mean, at the top here is very open. So you do have a lot of room for maneuvering around your opponents. And we do have the airfield being captured as well. So reinforcement Re pad, rather, yeah. that will drop. I don't actually know what it will for vanilla. Um, should just drop vanilla battle masters, I'd say. Yeah, perhaps. Yeah, uh, I'm going to vote for that. This helix is going for a bit of an attack here onto the base of, of Flash. Uh, he hasn't actually seen it. He's seen it now. He may lose his dozer. And... Lost. There's a fair bit of gats nearby, even an outpost as well. If you look in the middle as well, could it be the triple oil cap? It actually was. That's wow. three oil caps for Kozak. He's really been all over this. That's some impressive play. Uh, taking the garrisons near there as well. That's so much money. Like, I mean, that's, that's 3,000 straight off the bat, not to mention the, the continuing income coming out of that. And because of the garrisons that are actually right next to these oil derricks, it's really easy to just leave a red guard inside one of them. Gats are actually in the base now, though, and the Helix Ooh, doesn't get sniped. It does. Yeah, he does. Helix goes down here. There was really no static event defense coming in here for Kozak. He's, he's very mobile with these Helixes, but the Gats just walked in through the front door and took out that secondary Helix, probably for the uh, the prop for the heal. Helix now going for the, the trucks. Has to be very careful. The bunker is there. Looks like he's actually found an angle. No, just kidding. He's getting attacked oh, by the no, bunker. Oh, no, get out of there. Oh, he's going to lose that one. Definitely. Oh, oh it survived. Oh. What? That's some pretty important play uh, coming yeah, in. That's, oh, the RPGs are on the ground. Will they actually fire the shot? Just oh. gliding out of the range. Um, Impressive play. With that being said, though, despite the amount of income Kozik just got from capping oil of the, all of those oil derricks, it takes a long time to repair a Helix. Yeah, exactly. A very long time there, indeed. And a Dragon Tank has come out from Kozak. The bunker's actually empty. There's a, another outpost, two Gats, and a couple of tank... Hunters from Flash. 
So, one dozer's still there for Flash, so Flash really needs to hold on to his dozer. Gotta be careful, dozer's nice, but even the outpost as well may snipe the dozer. Dragon tank here, as well as the Gats, but the they're getting caught on the dragon tank yeah. and they're completely destroyed. Splash damage definitely coming out in full effect there. The dragon tank from Kozak wasn't quite enough, but it, it might have been a bit of a bait here. Not actually flame walling down the oil, Derek should be doing that. Where's the firewall? Well, that doesn't really matter, but yeah, there's a firewall onto yeah, the Gats. On the, the oil was recaptured by Flash in the middle. It will finally get taken down now, and some more outposts are being thrown into the fray. The Gats can't really fight them on their own. They need to have these tank hunters mixed in. We do have one on the side. There's actually a fair bit of helixes coming out now. We've got two bunker elixirs. This is probably going to be a propaganda tower for the regen. Uh, meanwhile, there's two supplies. No, there's actually no supply here for Flash. He has this one at the top. So it's 2-2. It's, two -two. it's even. But now the oil at the top is getting captured. It's going to be grabbed here from the looks of things in. Uh, to keep you all informed, it was Vanilla Battle Masters getting dropped by that reinforcement pad from the looks of things. Oh, yeah. I do like the play here from Kozak Boy. He's not really committing into Battle Masters or anything because obviously, you know, trying to tank, getting vet to Battle Masters, you just can't compete. So putting going into RPGs, like lots of listening outposts with helixes, is a good way to play it because the Gats only come out at veterancy one. And as you saw there, I mean, there's just no way uh, a Vets or a Battle Mask can deal with a Vet 2 one. It's just, it's there's, a, there's such a huge discrepancy. Yeah, exactly. And they're not cheap either. Not like a 1.6 with there, they're a lot less. So actually, there's four Helixes. So I would love to see Flash maybe just build a Gatling Cannon in his base. Uh, they're, they're very, very powerful. A lot more so than the Gatling Tanks. Yeah. So, especially if he has the Supply and a War Factory and a Propaganda Center in a small area, a Gatling Cannon might be a, a great investment. Uh, the thing is with Flash though, he's trying to tank, so his, his only anti-bunker really is the Flame Tanks. But fortunately for him, Kozak hasn't been completely garrisoning his bunkers, only a single RPG, can't really hold the line. We'll be firewalling down the supply as well once he clears through the bunker. The helixes are turning down to engage. Man, that is a lot of helixes. There's, there's two gats. If they spin up, they can maybe get two of them, but they probably will just die. They're firing now onto the helixes. There's a focus fire. There's one of them. Gats go down. Two gats fall. So he actually sold the supply. He maybe could have held onto it. The gats did swoop in, in time. So not exactly a bad trade, though. Mm. One bunker licks full of RPGs is pretty expensive. Definitely is. Uh, and at the same time, there's a pretty big army of outposts and a couple of gats. Is that a mind drop? Looks like it might be. Should have been. That's what it looked like to me. Oh, no, that's that's the tank drop. Oh, rather. it was the tank drop. Yeah, yeah. that's all it is. Okay. Uh, here we go, ECM tank. Nice choice by Flask. And the firewall here is fantastic. It's ripping through all of these gats. Absolutely and devastating. And the outposts. And the ECM deflected all of those rockets. I didn't think Flash had it in him, but that ECM came out at the perfect time. And that's the problem with relying on outposts, is RPGs can be countered. And they haven't retreated just yet. Oh, it actually loses that, that, uh, that gap there. Yeah, one of them still getting locked down, though. We'll have to see how good the ECM micro is. Nothing really to support it. It could go down here, but that was absolutely brutal play with the fire, with the flame walls, because it's... I mean, as you were saying, as, as we said earlier, I mean, it's a choke pointy map. There's a lot of choke points, but if you find a good choke, choke point um, with the dragon tank, you're going to do some serious damage, and that's what we saw there. Flash's supply went down. He has a second one still. Kozak rebuilding his, building up a propaganda central. That's a Black Lotus. going to be capping up the old Derek as well as the air landing pad. The Battle Master can't exactly do too much. He will be focusing down the pad, though. That's, that's actually a smart choice. Not really much he could do in response. So do we have a propaganda center actually coming out here from Kozik? Yes, yeah, we do. Yeah. Just finishing up now. Uh, we'll have access to his own Black Lotus fairly shortly. Flash is still mining, I think, off the uh, his secondary supply, the one he took up the top there. It's actually almost empty. Lost the supply earlier to the Helixes. So once you get those trucks mining again ASAP. Is he going to... Oh, yeah, he sold it. I thought he may have actually gone for the cash steal. But now the Helixes are moving in. May actually get a Gatling Cannon on one of them uh, for the sake of revealing and sh killing that Lotus. Wouldn't be a bad idea. Might need another Helix though. I think it's three bunkers and a prop there. Yeah, he has a lot of So the upgrade's already done. So he may not need to. He wants to get this Propaganda Center, but smartly Kozak is keeping the Helixes nearby. Yeah, it's not going to happen if the Helixes stick around. Yeah, moving in a Gat instead is going to be nice. And it looks like we're going to see a Carpet Bomb coming in as well. Uh, in combination strike. with the Arty Strike. So I'm guessing damage coming down onto the... Oh. Lotus is revealed. Helix is indeed. turning to engage the army of Flash. They're actually not going for the Lotus. Needs to capture. Oh, the Gatling Cannon's there. So, Gatling Tank. We'll take that one down. So, what do we see going down? There was a. Oh, went for too much here. 
The, uh, the classic general's mistake if you're trying to use the powers to take out every single building on the map and not getting any of them in this particular chance. So we really have to see the Helixes capitalize on this. Flash isn't going to let him though. All the Gats, all the Battle Masters, the ECMs, they're moving down to protect these buildings until they are repaired. So the prop didn't go down, which means ECM production is still in full swing. The CC is on about half health, as is the War Factory. So really, Kozak didn't get anything out of that. Yeah, that's really important as well, needed to, to take down these ECMs, because with the ECMs, the, the Helixes aren't as effective. Uh, Helixes, they do take out the oil at the top, though, and that's a pretty huge army. He's got four Gats, an ECM, and a Dragon Tank. Like he, he can deal with the, the Helixes, no problem at all. As long as the ECM isn't shutting down units and it's deflecting, then... And even at the bottom here as well, Flash has a, a pretty good army, but it looks like the Helixes are actually going to be... Trying to engage something else. They don't really go to this fight, but they will have to as the f the war factor is getting firewalled. The command center as well. The firewalls from Flash are real, man. Yeah. They're intense. The Overlord's coming in, but I mean, there's an ECM on the field. It's going to shut down. Yeah. Almost gets the ECM. He he's just swooping in now. The three Gats are all destroyed. Loses every single one because the ECM was, was disabling the overlord. the overlord. So that Overlord play actually made the difference. If he didn't have the Overlord, the ECM would have just been on standby. Yeah. Really smart choice there from Kozak. Overlord, because of the amount of health it has, is one of the, pretty much the longest unit in the game that it takes the ECM to shut down. It takes the longest for the ECM to actually shut down um, the Overlord. So it was focusing it down for a really extended period of time. It allows the Helixes to snipe all the Gats. Really good play. Yeah, Artie Strike will take the supply down. Mm. Airfield is still alive for now. There is actually a Dozer and a War Factory. It's not the end of the world for Kozak. But the problem here for Flash as well is he only has Gats, and he can't deal with an Overlord with just Gats. He's going to have to get a lot more ECNs, almost gets the Propaganda Center. That would have been a very vital snipe. I don't think we've actually seen a Lotus from Kozak. I haven't seen one, no. And he can um, build one now. Would be a good idea to get that out on the map, especially with how low that Propaganda Center is and the likelihood that he could use it, lose it. The way to get back into a game is with that Lotus. Yeah. Um, really potent. But... He has a fire base, will be a little bit annoying against the ECM and the, the Overlord. Has a propaganda center, propaganda tower on that Overlord. I don't think you can quite fit an entire propaganda center. You can <laughs> try, I mean, I think the Helix pilots might give it a shot. Uh, like this ECM is giving a shot of standing within range of the fire base. Bro, I'd move. Yeah, you can't deflect cannons, unfortunately. No, I mean, it would be nice, but uh, not gonna happen. See you later, ECM. Takes that one down. And with the ECM down, no Gatling Cannon on the Overlord, the Tank Hunter Spam would, would do it. At the bottom, the... Orderic was recaptured. I'm not sure what with. Helixes should be fine. There was no... There actually wasn't ECM. There was only one Gat. Um, so that's a Lotus, but it is, of course, Flash's Lotus. Having been yeah. rebuilt. And the Helixes may get intercepted by these Gatling Tanks. It's a good unit mix here. The yeah, War Factory hasn't been repaired yet. He's going to be sniping down the Supply. Needs to avoid the engagement here. Supply goes down. An airfield. I wonder why Flash built one of those, but loses one of the helixes. Maybe wanted some MIGs. MIGs. I'm guessing MIGs, oh, yeah. Oh, this is a great attack here by, by Kozak. This might actually get him back in the game yeah, here. Really yeah. abusing uh, the immobility of these these Gatling tanks compared to the helixes. The helixes are all over this. Oh, oh and the play is real, man. Knowing how many rockets it's going to take to actually take out... Uh, a particular building is a, is a really crucial skill when it comes to microing. And there's the micro. Oh, what wow. the cats! The plays here are absolutely real, incredible <laughs> stuff from Kozak Boy. He's going to get himself back into this game. Not quite enough of the helixes to capitalize, but it's definitely going to stop those Gatling tanks from actually rolling back in. This yeah, is it some slowed real them play. down too much. The supply gets sold off. It doesn't uh, even matter. It gets destroyed. Yeah, it doesn't get sold off in time. It doesn't get the sell, but the, the, the supply stash was actually. Exhausted. This is huge. The the helix micro from Kozak is unbelievable. I think that's why Flash needs to get a Gatling cannon because it only costs slightly less than two Gatling tanks. And mm. if you leave one of them, he can't send the helixes in that yeah. range. He can probably kill it, but he'll lose one, maybe two helixes. It just wouldn't At be least worth it. two if you tried to to yeah. onto onto a Gatling cannon. Doesn't actually have the uh, chain gun upgrade either, so he doesn't have that extra damage. And I think if Kozak can just hold on and just pump out more overlords, mm. then it's it's going to force Flash to, to build something other than uh, the Gatling tanks. Hardy Strike going to be coming in. I'm guessing going for the Propaganda Center at this stage of the game. Where so, do we go? Yeah, I guess the Propaganda Center. Actually, the Lotus uh, from Flash is going to be good against the overlord. He can disable them. 
and then just have the the uh, the outpost to finish them off. Has actually built another supply in the middle. Shuts down the dragon tank. Overlord is moving in now. Helix is nowhere to be I think seen. They were healing on the air airfield, but I'm not sure where they are now. This yeah. is be a bad engagement for the Helix is going to. The Gats are already spun up. The Overlord's doing some great damage as well, taking down the Gats, but three East, two ECMs shot it down relatively quickly. The fire base is still there. The, not the fire base, the uh, the platform, artillery platform. Oh, cool. So the bottom oil was recaptured by Flash. That's giving him some much needed money. The supplies here are, are pretty much exhausted as well. 3,000 left. Oh, that was an EMP. Oh, wow. Oh, that EMP. That was absolutely amazing. It gets the entire that boy, army. That was for real. I'm um, still going to be firing out of that attack outpost. They're going to be shutting down those listening outposts ASAP. Well, there's still deflection coming in from one of those ECMs as well. It doesn't look like it was actually shut down, but I think it's going to be enough here. One helix does actually go down. No, it yeah, doesn't go down. Still here. It's really low. Actually, he may lose his helix. He might lose the helix. The helix is going to get out of there. What about the Gatling tank? It, it gets powered up now. One here this goes Ooh, down. The other one survives on virtually nothing. Now that didn't go as well as I thought it would I because the outpost was still firing the entire time. There was time. no Gatling cannon as well. You, you it's, it can be nice to mix in that Gatling cannon helix because that's a way to deal with the RPGs on the ground. <laughs> Did you just say Gatling Callum? A Gatling Callum? I might have done. Like Lotus. Yeah, a Gatling Freudian Callum to counter there, my the, uh, the Black Lotus. Yeah, exactly. That's what you want. Uh, What's that? Is that the EMP? It's just, just a mind drop on oh, the factory. Drop, gonna yeah. be delaying. And the Gatlas are moving in, and these outposts can't do anything. You may want to evacuate them and just have those tank hunters on the ground. Artie Strikes comes through to the, the airfield to prevent the heals. Uh, trying to juke around. Yeah, I'm pretty sure uh, Kozak would have actually heard... Um, he would have heard the uh, the Artie Strike coming in and had to move those helixes because the helixes were down on the ground repairing. The Artie Strike would have taken them out. Yeah, now there's nice no repair try. for them. There's no repair. Propaganda Tower. That's smart. That's what you want, yeah. You can tell a good China player whether, as to whether they have Propaganda Towers yeah. uh, thrown up in their defensive positions or not. As Though, we see here, there there's no one. subliminal messaging. You need to get no. that one. It's very cheap and it makes them rebuild faster. Yeah. I think the Flash doesn't actually know where the Helixes are. He's trying to find them. Um, can't attack the base with the Overlords. So I think in that engagement earlier, um, Kozak should have focused the focus on the outposts and even mm. the... the, the Tank hunters with the machine guns. So yeah, he actually went for the Gatlings first, but that is a pretty much a fully heroic tank hunter army inside of that Vet 2 Helix. Yeah, I think all but one of those tank hunters are, are fully heroic at this point. It wasn't even full. Gotta love <laughs> those. Gotta love those red missiles, my friend. Um, this is this is a power point for those Helixes because, I mean, one v oneing one v oneing a couple of one v twoing a couple of Gats is absolutely no problem for them at this point. The the tank hunters just do ridiculous amounts of damage. Healing up now, that was so smart, going for the Propaganda Tower. He knew he couldn't build another airfield, especially with carpet bombs and... Uh, and the space as well. Else? It's hard to actually fit an airfield. Mm. He doesn't want to move his dozer up, because he can get he can get it caught. So, yeah, and it's cheaper than an airfield. Flash is looking strong in the sense that he still has the old Eric, but... Oh, oh wow! That's unfortunate. Flash is not going to be happy. The Helix survives on... And this has happened Nothing like three times now. Yeah. There's been so many instances where there's helixes barely Can you slip imagine away. how shot up the helix is at this point? I yeah. mean, like, they're just trying to patch everything with duct tape. It's just like, it's fine, guys. We can still fly. Actually, it looks like Flash <laughs> wants to counter the Overlords with a, a bunker helix of his own. Different. A bold move, and it may actually pay off here. There is a GAT. Does the GAT focus in time? Doesn't look like it. Yeah, there's a helix here, a Gatling on the ground. A carpet bomb comes through. For the war factory hasn't repaired that one. Yeah, the, the, the overall is getting shut down by that helix pretty hard. So that actually worked out quite well. Here comes the, the other helix, but they're so low. He's engaging the full health helix with wounded helixes. What is he doing? He's gonna lose. Oh no! Oh, get come, the on. Snipe. Oh, come on, Kozak! Kozak! <laughs> How does this keep happening? What a chance! I think there, there was only like two or three tank hunters yeah. on flat in Flash's helix, and they it definitely full. weren't fully heroic. So <laughs> yeah, they weren't heroic. So, <laughs> Kozak once again surviving. The Vet 2 gives him the repair. So when he combines that with the Propaganda Tower, he should be keeping himself up and alive. This middle supply is still active. He's going to be getting the income, again, plus the old Derek. And these these supplies are pretty much exhausted. So Not much left. Yeah, he's actually out of supplies. Still General's powers, though. And as we speak, the Arty Strike comes in. And an unkillable uh, helix, which is apparently yes. completely invincible. We, we need some more gats, man. We need some more gats. I don't know where he's arting, Maybe though. the airfields? Or the war factory? The war factory would probably be a better choice. 
Yeah, Wolf Factory goes down. Yeah, I actually don't think Kozak... Oh, he sees the, the, uh... He yeah. sees the old Eric. He's Does really he want it, that. or...? Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, think at this point it's just better to snipe it down. He still has a barracks and a propaganda center. It's like, where's the Lotus? Yeah, he can build a Lotus, go for a cap. It's going to be hard for him to cap the base of Flash, because there is a lot of Gatling tanks in the outpost, but still worth it. You know, leave the Lotus in the base, wait for the, the Gats to be drawn out by mm. a Helix push, and then just start capping something. Going out now for the flank here. He can certainly shut down my Facebook sounds. Uh, I'm, I'm <laughs> and I think both of our players are suffering from the fact oh, that, I mean, China just has pretty poor map vision. Let's be honest. Um, it's not yeah. great. Uh, well, you don't have any, any uh, spy drones. You don't have tunnel networks everywhere. It's uh, hard to know what your opponent actually does have left. And that's why we see a bit of a, a slowdown in the game so far. CC does get sold off and there is still a... Um, there is still a, a, a dozer, so that's okay. The mine goes walled. down as well, and another mine drop. Yeah, a fresh one. Yeah. He's gonna have to sweep those with the the dozer. Gatling tank won't be able they to just get. Just can't this do anything at this yeah. point. You need you need more. But with the command center down, that is a huge victory for Flash. Now he doesn't have to worry about cover bombs, EMPs, just destroying the base of Flash. But what does he have left? I mean, well, how can he deal with this helix? The war factories have been sniped down. Sniping down the war factories is huge. They're so expensive. I think and gap production is, is virtually yeah, nothing here. I think he just built one. He needs to get two gats and maybe spin up his gatling on the ground here. Mm -hmm. He's out of his old Eric. Yeah, we won't get the cell either. The plays here are real, man. Kozak, he knows how to micro this helix. He can go into uh, this, it's fine. Really bad oh, yeah. micro from Flash. He needs to have it stationary. Once again, he's moving. And it wasn't spun up. Oh, if that wow. first Gatling tank was stationary the entire time and preferably spun up, uh, he would have been... I think he just quit. Yeah, that would yeah, be the game. He had a, an arty strike on, on the base of Kozak, but... Uh, yeah. <laughs> How close was that Helix to dying? Oh, though? it was so close. That was the other one as well. The, the really wounded one ended up going down, but the other one survived. Yeah. And like, I remember you and me have had Helix micro battles yeah, yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. They're really intense, and it's super hard to get the RPGs in the right position. But uh, Kozak's micro was incredible. The The real thing with, with microing Helixes, and it's a lot easier with Rock Feeds because you kind of stay stationary while you're sniping buildings. With Helixes, you have to know how many more rockets are going to fire. Can I snipe this building while still moving? Yeah. Because you don't want to stop and then start going again because the helix to slow down, they can get caught out by Gats. Kozak nearly every time had just perfect micro where yeah, yeah. the last couple of rockets would take out the building and then he'd keep moving along with the helix army. That's why the push was so effective where he took out all, all of Flash's buildings because just kept moving so fast with the helixes, yeah. the Gats couldn't keep up. And the mine drop as well, the predictive mine drop was beautiful. Yeah, that Kozak. was great. That stopped the Gats from chasing, allowed him to snipe another supply, several supply trucks. Fantastic, and Flash was was really good as well. I think his flame walls are some of the best we've ever seen. I mean, on those those cutoffs was real. Yeah. So many building snipes as well. What's the saying? It's like bad boys don't look at explosions or something. What's that for? You, you know, you know, like in movies, how mm -hmm. like whenever there's an explosion, they oh always, right, like, yeah, they're walk walking away and walking away, and it like it's explodes like, in the background with, yeah. with sunglasses. Yeah, on. yeah it's I like the, the helix idea. where yeah. it's like you, you <laughs> know that you're gonna kill it, so you don't have to like sit there watching mm -hmm. it. It's a great micro. I, I think the real takeaway for me is if Flash had, like, even just one, one stationary Gatling, Gatling cannon, cannon, preferably a second one on his supply, yeah. the the, the helixes would have been able to wouldn't have been able to do much at all. They, I mean, that was have... that was really Kozak's only way into back into that game. So yeah, and and then you kind of had that the situation where the helixes they they go in and they go oh crap and then they go out and then they get caught by the Gatling tanks. Mm. So it, it makes it a lot harder to move them around and they're not expensive. Gatling cannons cost twelve hundred. It's it's really not that much. It's it's less than than two Gatling tanks. So I think that would have been smart. Chain guns would have been nice as well. Yeah, didn't get chain true. guns. I didn't get chain guns. No, okay. he didn't. Not no, the entire game. Um, but yeah, that was that was really great stuff. And I, I do love seeing different maps. Mm. A lot of interesting play styles come out of the result. It was yeah. I think there was there was two really good players actually. Really yeah. solid plays. Um, coming out there from from both, but congratulations, oh, I Kozak. I mean, look at that. We have twenty, almost twenty thousand supplies less collected. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's pretty rare that you actually see that. Normally, it's the economic advantage that really turns a game. In this case, it's all about the helix micro. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So a couple of shout outs. Uh, firstly, so one of the top players, Dominator, actually has his own YouTube channel. He started up doing mainly uh, shoutcasts. He also does uh, like kind of montages and stuff. And since he is actually a pro player, unlike us who are awful, he'll be able to give like really in-depth analysis. Yeah. So if you're after more zero hour content, I'd recommend checking out his channel. 
Uh, I'll just send it a link in the description and put a annotation on the screen because he has a really awkward URL. So I can't say the URL. It's like 20 <laughs> characters. Um, so check him out if you want to see more Zero Hour stuff. Other than that, if you want to see us post more Zero Hour on the channel, do check out our Patreon. I'm trying to turn it into more of a full-time endeavor. Other than that, thanks for watching. Catch you later. Bye.